On this episode of the podcast, I have with me Michel Trico. He is the CEO and co-founder of Airbyte. We're going to be talking about startup culture, a lot around company, how they view cult- culture, how founders imprint culture, optimizing company values. How do you find people that align to those values and actually grow into those values? We got a, a lot to cover. We'll see how far we can get. Michel, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thank you, Amir, for having me. Awesome. All right, before we start, um, Airbyte, tell us tell us what you guys do. Yeah, of course. So we're an open source uh, data movement platform, meaning that we help every single company access more data, replicate more data, and centralize more data. Our goal is really, you have all these silos of data. How do you bring it into data warehouses, data lake, operational system to just extract more value out of it? And yeah, we've been, we've been around for like the, the past four years. Three years, if we consider the first year of actually starting the company and, and finding the product, but yes. And yeah, we have about 150,000 deployment of the open source software and a very good footprint of, uh, of customers as well. Very cool. Very cool. I mean, that that's a good story in of itself, but maybe we'll cover it a different day. Uh, today, uh, we're talking about startup culture, and obviously, you guys have been around. You're, you're growing and when we talk about startup culture, and, and, I, and I guess if you're not listening and you work at a big company, I'm sure you've heard of startup culture. And maybe I will ask you to start, why do we define startup culture differently? Why, why is it that people need to view startup culture as a different type of culture? I, like the main reason is there is a level of risk in a startup that does not, and risk and uncertainty that does not exist in larger companies. And Having this ability to live every single day with this uncertainty requires a very special type of people or a very special profile of people. And that's why we, we like to make the difference between startup and, and bigger companies. Awesome. I like that. That's, that's a very good distinction. So when you're looking at culture and we're looking at company values, obviously people spend all kinds of time on defining company values. When you view as a co-founder, as a founder of, of, of Airbyte, when you're looking at your company's values, if you were to look back when you first started to now, how much has changed or how, 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 how much of it has evolved in the last couple of years? That's an interesting question. You know, in 2020, when we started Airbyte, within the first months, we had our first company meeting where we said, hey, let's figure out what our company value should be. And they have evolved over the years. And for for me, like the goal when you're thinking about value is it's not just where you at, it's also where you want to go. So that's why like values need to evolve. Now, for me, like when you're thinking about value, there is always an underlying foundation whenever I think about it, which is use the best judgment and do what is best for the company. That for me are the two like untold, untold values, but they underlie every single value that we can find and yeah but and they evolve and they evolve also with the people in the end it's just what stage you're at what behavior you want to promote what behavior you want to avoid and that will change over time so we we work with a uh, we work with a lot of founders and and obviously the one thing that i consistently see during the hiring process is trying to understand how people align to those values and i think as the founder and so much investment and so much absorption of risk obviously you want people to have a clear understanding when you're interviewing people and you're trying to hire people how do you try to ascertain if you see those values embodied in a potential hire so the first thing when we're looking at values and that's yeah i think your question about hiring is important is values are not meant to please everyone like especially on the hiring phase they are supposed to be a filter for the type of individual you want to bring in and you know for example one of our value that's one that we actually kept since the beginning it's be a ceo of your project and not everybody wants to do that. Some people want to just have a Jira ticket and they want to close it and they don't want to take too much like ownership on, on everything. 
And, and that's fine. Like the, some company will be extremely good if they work this way. For us, the fact that it is a value, it means that everybody expects from everyone to behave as a CEO of your project, meaning you're very independent or very driven. You can make your own decision and you know how to keep people around you aware of it. And so, for example, like when we look at people during interviews and we want to evaluate on that particular value, it is always going to be talking about, tell me about a day you had a, a project where the definition was very blurry and tell me how you went about it. And then we let the, the candidate tell us the story, how they manage this uncertainty, how they manage their stakeholders, how they manage the execution, how they manage when a team was not doing something on time. I, I, recently, I was talking with a, with a finance leader, and that person was asked for like some data from the data team, and the data team was not providing that information. So what did he do? He just went into the warehouse pull the data, put it in a spreadsheet, and, and got the data himself. And that, that's what I mean by being a CEO of your project. Is sometimes you cannot just wait for other people to do what you need. You just need to get that thing to be successful, and it's, a, it's on you. And that's, that would be an example of how we, we try to like, apply values and detect values at the, at the hiring phase. I quite like that value. Um, I guess just maybe a, a follow-up to that, because I see... Lots of companies, they try to establish values. Um, I, I think sometimes the gap from a value is the actual execution of the value. Because, and we could use the example that you mentioned, be the CEO of your own project. Um, you know, it's funny, CEOs can fail. And they go on to be a CEO of another company. And uh, they'll take that failure and go, hey, I learned this and this time I'm going to be a better CEO. Um, when you look at that value, and obviously as a, as a CEO and a leader of the org, how do you support people to go, it's okay to fail? Like in particular, this value obviously has to have that that support behind it so people can go, I understand that the value is held this closely that I will fail as the CEO of my own projects. Yeah, failure is, most of the time is good. Like I think failure is good when, one, you understand why that fail, and, and two, You've communicated about it. That's the two moments when it's, it's good to fail. In general, also, you've exercised good judgment along the way. That's also something that you want to look at. But yeah, like if in that particular case, if someone fails and they behave as a CEO of their project, they will go and talk to me. They are going to talk to my co-founders. They're going to talk to the product team or the sales team saying, yep, that thing is not working. It's going to be late or we went in the wrong direction, we need to start from scratch. And that's fine. It's, it's always a matter of like how you're communicating and how you're setting that expectation and also how, like if you were to do it again, what would you do differently? And if you don't have that, then the failure is not okay. And that's why like we do a lot of, for, for example, a lot of post-mortem, a lot of debrief, whenever we have this type of failure. And even if we, when we have successes, because you're always looking at, what would I do differently that might lead to an even better outcome? So that's, a, that's a, I think, a way of looking at failure and, and even looking at successes, yeah. I, I guess, you know, as, as the founder, um, you know, if you, if you were to go back, obviously, with the smallest size of the team, you guys, you know, gals and just guys, generally speaking, but, but you individuals are very tightly focused on certain execution it, it it almost at that point everyone that comes in because you're so close to every individual, your culture's almost by osmosis is, is being imprinted on those first few people. And as obviously you grow, it might start shifting, it might start evolving as it were. But that initial imprint, um, I guess I haven't asked this question of a founder before, but as as that initial imprint and you start hiring and you find distance from it, do you sometimes look at that and go, it's part of the journey that I will have people that will interpret those values on their own and they'll start delivering it in their own words. Cause it will be different than the, your exact views on those cultures. Yeah. There is always going to be a little bit of a drift and that's why also value evolved. Like they can, you cannot just like, you know what I said, I was saying before, which is, yeah, we, we had a set of values and some of them we discarded because we thought that they, they did not matter. So they were not enough of a filter for all the people we want to bring in. 
And sometimes just, yeah, people have a different interpretation and maybe their interpretation is better. But ultimately, what you're doing when you setting up your, your value and your company culture is that you make sure that whomever works at Airbyte, for example, has no surprise about other behaviors. And that's what you want. Like, If you put someone who is just looking to get tasks assigned to them, and on the other side, you have someone who is a CEO of their project, and they interact with this other person, they will be surprised. They will not, like something will be broken in what their expectation of that other person. And I think that's how like this imprinting remains and how by growing the team, you, you keep that really alive. It's like you're building on top of the existing team and this existing team has expectation about who they work with. And if they don't see the same behavior, that will course correct automatically. It's just, yeah. Now, if you triple the size of the team, that's when it's harder because suddenly like the, the foundation is smaller than the new commerce. And that's where I think you need to be, to be stronger, but we have not gone through that yet. So I don't know how to, uh, how to make sure that the imprinting continues to work. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. I, and, and, you know, it's interesting. You mentioned, um, you know, reducing it, actually the interaction amongst people. There's a, there's a similar expectation that other people have come in understanding how to operate within the values of the company as you're kind of looking at, and again, you haven't gotten there, but as you're looking at the people you've hired and you get to reflect back and you get to observe them, how often do you guys get back together as a group to re-exam? You mentioned early on, you, you know, you, you first set up the company values, but is it something that you spend time on yearly, six months, every couple of years? Or, I mean, you guys are a pretty young company anyway, so. I don't know if we, I think organically we're doing it once a, once a year. And in general, it happens just after the summer. Uh, so in September is, and it also, it coincided, it also coincided with when the, the whole team gets together in, in San Francisco. So we, if we need to do some adjustment, if we need to do some new announcements, we can do it at that point. But organically, once a year, the, the thing also is, it, it is also something that you need to remind people every single day. And, one of the, there are a few mechanisms that we have. One is around how we give feedback. It's around the type of question we ask when someone has a, a project, for example, like if you look at engineering, one of our value is building leverage because building leverage is about creating a compounding effect on your technology, on your platform. So there is a lot of project where we're always going to say and ask, and people now do it all the time, which is how is that building leverage for, for the team? How is that going to compound over time? And the other, the other thing we do is this, we have this kudos channel. So every single day, that's one of my favorite channels, actually. People give kudos to other people. And in general, they put a little value emoji. We have four values. So we have four different emojis. And they tag these kudos with, with values. So it's a way of giving example every single day of how people uh, living through these values. And that gives an example to the rest of the team. That gives an example to people who are starting at Airbyte. And that's, I think, how you keep this imprinting line. And I think as you're mentioning the like the feedback mechanism and that imprinting, I, I guess as you're kind of using, you know, from the standpoint of you hire somebody and you observe certain behaviors, you have values that you're trying to guide to, they come on board, the hiring and the feedback to, to maintain to the company values, how do you see that tracking? Because obviously, I don't know if people really keep granular metrics like that, but do you observe people who that come in that have that understanding excelling further than people that don't have that understanding? Because obviously, you mentioned there's a interaction and comfort that everyone, if they're on the same page, is, is, is probably easier. You know, when we do feedback, we always have these four dimensions. Like one is being a CEO of your project, building leverage, like working with the team and like being uh, uh, like in touch with, with our customers. And customers can be internal. And every time the review is made on that front. And that's how we, that's how we, we do like performance review, for example. Like how does it, how are you being, how are you embracing that? How are you manifesting that on, on, on a day to day? And yes, like 
someone who does not exhibit the C of your project, for example, value, is not going to perform as well as someone who does because the expectation is like they won't be successful at projects because they need to do something that they are not doing. They need to go out. They need to talk to our community members to get information and things like that. So in a way, you will see that in the day-to-day, -day, like the success of their project, if they do or not do that, because nobody else is going to do it for them. That's the thing. So that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And, and I guess from the standpoint of, of when you are looking at your culture and you mentioned, obviously, that it's always evolving and no one knows where it's going, but obviously the organic growth that you see as a company, you have a North Star. And as these as values evolve, that alignment is is gets trickier and trickier as you get bigger because again that that original imprinting you start separating your distance. I call it that distance away from the core. When you start looking at the business and you are making sure that everyone understands the direction, the north star, and then you need to keep looking at those values that that separation. How do you navigate and making sure that? That, that connection remains strong? That's a great question. I don't think I have enough history to talk about it, but ideally the way that would work is, I think that this, this idea of giving feedback around these values is how you prevent that things from disconnecting or from drifting away from your North Star. If you are reminded every day that this is the behavior that we that we value and that we promote, and that normally it should be in line with the North Star, I don't see a, a reason. It's, it's, for me, it's a matter of like repeating it. Every day, you need to hear something about value. You need to see an example of it. And I, I would say the only moment when where, where I would see a drift is, yeah, maybe one value is not as frequently mentioned. That could be an example. And it could be that, yeah, maybe people don't get it and maybe we need to rephrase it, but the intention behind it will still remain. It's just we need to maybe rephrase it. We need to push more about, about that value. But I think for me, it's the repetition that makes sure that you don't have that drift created, that, that, that gets created. It's like the repetition and it's the ritual you put around them. Yeah, I mean, certainly, uh, you know, and I know you guys are still young, um, and obviously, you know, the mission of the company is still fairly well defined. You know, when you're looking, if you're going back to the hiring process, and as you are talking to people and you are looking at people and you're trying to ask questions and embody those values, how much do you? I don't know. It could be zero. It could be nothing. I don't know. But uh, how much do you start forecasting? Is this person going to add value? Right. Everyone obviously likes people to come in to 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 have that baseline, but also everyone would love somebody to be that value add. They can actually add their own, you know, abilities to that cultural values and company values to help grow. As you've seen, yeah, as that separation grows, all that discussion. I mean, there is definitely a correlation. You know, when you put someone as strong yes on C of your project, they become generally very successful at Airbyte. So there is a direct correlation between like how what the senior we've seen. And and what I like actually about it is being a, like and I'm just anchoring on this one, like the C of your project, because it can mean something different for other people. But there are traits that you're looking for. And sometimes people will exhibit it in a different way. But the traits are here, which is someone who is very self-motivated, someone who is very risk uh, compatible. And yeah, maybe they will exhibit it differently from like the, 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 the initial people from the team. But the traits of self-driving, like being self, uh, completely autonomous, being able to just get the information without like asking like 10,000 people, like those are things that like, those are new behavior that get created, but they are always tied to the, to this value of, so I think it's going to be more like new types of behavior are going to emerge, but they are always tied to that value of 
I, I know what I'm doing and I'm going to do it and nobody else but me is responsible for the, for the outcome of that, of that project. But I don't know if that answers your question, but. No, I, th- I think in a way you did. I think in a way you did because it is interesting because, um, you know, I think a lot of what I'm really taking away is if you have the baseline and everyone is is understanding the, the rhythm, the cadence that as expected, I think then your expected results and output, at least you have a baseline when it's everyone is all over. And I think we see that at bigger companies. There's, you know, the values are embodied, but they're just a lot of people. And as with more people, you you do you do see variability. I guess a question for you, um, it, you know, you're in the middle of growing a very, uh, you know, uh, upward trajectory company. If you were to look back and say, hey, um, you know, you're looking at somebody who's just starting a company and you've gone through understanding your company values. Any advice for somebody at the early part of wanting to start a company on, on company values? Absolutely. And it goes back to your first question, which is, what is what is a startup culture? And I would make sure that within your value, you have something that makes sure that you get people that can live with risk, that can live with uncertainty, and that can live with, hey, nobody's going to do this thing for you. You have to do it yourself. And f- for a startup, I think this is the most important skill you need to be finding in the people you bring in. Like if people are always waiting for you to tell them what to do, you're in trouble because you become a bottleneck. You, like people are going to be unhappy because one day they work on one project and this, the day after, because you've discovered something new, they need to work on something else and they won't like, and they won't enjoy that. Yeah. Switching and, and, and uncertainty. So th- I would say that's probably the, the most important thing I would look at value wise or culture wise is bring people that are compatible with startups. I like that. That's a, that's a good one. Michelle, I know, I know you got to get back to running your startup. So I, I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate, um, uh, the, the insights. If, if somebody wants to reach out to you to, to we'll talk to you about Airbyte or about startup culture and, and company values, you've, you've kind of given us a great overview and, and given us great details. What's a good way of connecting with you? Yeah, so two ways. Like the, the, the main one is going to be on LinkedIn. I try also to post a, a lot around company, around data and everything. The second one is just joining our data community on our Slack. We have uh, close to 20,000 people and people can reach me directly on, the, on this public Slack. So that's a, that's a nice way as well. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being on and sharing. Thank you, Amir. All right. That's it for the episode. Be back again, different guests, different topic. Until then, uh, two things. One, startup culture is not always easy. And I think Michelle went through and kind of highlighted his journey and they're in a great upward trajectory and great insights in terms of how they are evolving. Please share this with somebody else who might benefit. I would appreciate that. Also, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know how the podcast is doing. Until next time, thank you and goodbye.